What's going on guys, Bingo here. I'm with the Dual Factory for episode 23 of X2 Drop, our weekly Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast that we do, talking about anything that happened this week, or shit we just feel like talking about. And this week we had a pretty big event for a lot of people, which is the 2019 World Championship. And it was, I mean, it was a pretty cool event to watch, obviously. Nobody really gets to go to it, but we did have the opportunity to play in the World Championship Series events at OTS stores, which both me and the Dual Factory went to, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but, Joe, how do you think the World Championship went? Uh, so, my opinion never changes on the W. Well, the World Championship qualifier, not some World Championship qualifier, but the actual World Championship. Uh, it's a make believe format, so I mean, it's whatever. But, uh, in terms of like actual like deck uh, innovation and stuff like that, some of the stuff I saw was really cool. I think one of uh, the things you mentioned is the assurgence of triple mind control. The card's insane. Uh, yeah. There was a lot more thunder represented apparently than I thought there was going to be. Yeah, that uh, was mostly from uh, U.S. players, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, even with one Colossus, they were still playing it because I mean, like the deck still combos. Uh, I like I said, I slept through most of it, but was Sky Striker even represented at all there or no? Yeah, uh, I believe Sky Striker made top eight, uh, either top eight or top four, uh, because obviously they didn't stream every match because of all the events going on. But mm-hmm. um, I know one combo deck, which is like the Crusadia Thunder, made it to top four uh, and two Sally. Yeah. Cody Angelov, uh, the only U.S. player to make top four, and he got beat up, unfortunately. Yeah. But, so um, what Joe was saying earlier is the world is a make-believe format. There's so many tech choices and deck-building calls that you wouldn't make going into uh, YCS with 13 rounds because you're playing with the highest caliber of player. So you just make a metagame call. That's why, like, what is it, 2012, 2013, Exodia, like, top – got top 16 i think it was, it was either 2011 or 2012 where uh jarell pro winston whoever uh remembers him uh he went to worlds and he's like fuck it i'm gonna play exodia and he made top yeah and we bring that up because you can see in the especially the top two uh the finalists they were playing very few hand traps i believe one list was just playing phantasme and ash and they were also like maining mind control and do, doing a lot of weird stuff that you wouldn't do in a traditional Salomon great deck. That's because the format was so specific. Like you knew you were going to play one of three or four decks. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like so, like worlds, like you were saying, it's not like you're going to a thirteen round event. The first worlds is actually a so when I went back in Orlando, what I remember of it, it was like a six round tournament. So it was just like. A really really glorified locals that has their own list because you have to play a combination of the two lists because our set releases are also different from the ocgs and theirs vice versa and then we have cards that they don't have and so on and so on so you have to make a combined list so that's why i call it a make-believe format but uh like i said six rounds of a glorified locals and usually there's like two like four runner decks at every world like this year like to me, I thought it was Sky Striker, Salmon Great, right? Because yeah. those were the most consistent decks that we had available. I still think those were the top two decks. It's just uh, everyone was... It, when they're going into this event, it's like, who can counterplay the counterplay? Like, There's so much thought in going into just deck choice alone that some sometimes the best deck isn't the most represented or the most likely deck isn't most represented because that's what everybody thinks. And then everybody counters that, and it's just like this weird, like pre mind game to the, the event even starting. Exactly. And then like there's always going to be something off the wall that shows up at Worlds. It always happens. You just don't know who's playing it. But usually people will do that to play decks that can beat the other decks. To me, I feel like the off the wall was like the Thunder deck because I didn't think anyone was going to play it with one Colossus. Yeah. No. So um, before we talk about the decks anymore, the, so, some of the notable uh, things that you weren't allowed to play. Uh, Colossus and Hawk are both at one. You can't play any of the dangers. Ash Blossom's at two. Panker Tops was at two. Uh, Circle's at three for Salamon Great. Gazelle's at one. Uh, Sky Striker, Multi Roll is at three. Engage is at two. And Widow Anchor's at two. Uh, and Multi Figure's at one. I think those were the. Those, those are the really big notables. Yeah. Another notable that I feel like went under the radar. Um, for those of you who didn't know, Bardiche was legal for this event. Yes, but Mermaid was banned. 
Mermaid was man. So you don't really play Orcus, but I honestly thought you might saw maybe some sort of Goki strategy pop up. I don't know where. I thought like maybe a Pendulum. Uh, oh wait, they have Chrono at one and. Um, yeah, all the good tur- all the tur- good Turbo cards are. Yeah, uh, Dark Worms at one. Yeah, so Pendulum was kind of hard to play. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, yeah, like we were saying, you're talking about uh, Thunder being a like surprise deck. To me, yeah, that to me that would have been the surprise deck because like that's bold to play with one Colossus because I know over here playing TCG because you know I'm the dedicated Thunder player of our group. A lot of your combos you'll go through two Colossus because you need the extra level eight to make a rank eight play. So I mean like. And it, it is it doesn't seem that big of a deal, but that's actually a huge hindrance not having access to that second card. Plus, a lot of them, I think, opted to play the Sekis build, so you're not playing cards like Thunder Dragon Fusion to recycle your Colossus or anything like that. So, I mean, kudos to them. They made it work, but, I mean, to me, that was a bold decision. Yeah, I just thought since the absence of the dangers and Colossus being at one, like... Yeah, like, there's enough extenders, but they were so... so I watched... Uh, I think it was round three or four where dude got hand trapped on his Magius and just passed. Yeah. You said that's that. That's what would make me nervous. Play, Cause you just, you don't have the benefit of those extenders. Like it's just, I shouldn't say not the benefit of having extenders, the benefit of having the most generic extenders yeah, that just the, make the right perfect. ones to, exactly. to fix the, because you you know people you can always expect one hand trap like regardless and it, it was just weird choke point but so the 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 winner was Salomon Great um, a Japan player I can't remember his name but it was a Salad Mirror in the finals and that deck is still the only difference between that deck and the what we have legal for play is circle right In circles so. so- that's super interesting, honestly. Yeah, it's going to be weird for TC. Am I honestly? Because that's what I played this weekend for the World Celebration. I played Salomon Great. And I'm not going to lie to you, uh, the deck's still really potent. Like, yeah, our format only has... Okay, so technically we have six copies of Gazelle. I personally think we only have five, because let's be real here. Lady Debug's never resolving, so you can't count that. Yeah. But, uh... In Worlds format, you had eight. Now we're going to have six. I mean, that's still, like, a big number of gazelles in your deck. And then, uh, like you were saying over there, for uh, the Worlds, the mirror match, the first place the guy's deck profile, his was actually wild. Because I personally thought uh, Flame Buffalo just wasn't worth playing. Because I thought the deck was good enough without it. But, I mean, he was playing Flame Buffalo, it looked like. Uh, you're saying he was main decking triple mind control. Yep. Like that card's like people just completely sleep on that card. That card, it like it's yeah. insane to me. That card, so especially in the mirror, and that, that was a big thing. Over, um, it was either just over or just under half of the field was Salomon Great, and maining that card in that deck, and getting paired with the mirror over and over again put him at such a huge advantage. Yeah, like, you can just take his cards and you can use them to start your combos or like. You, and like you have so many lines of play that you can do. Yeah, like being able, like it's it's a powerful effect. Like because I had to do this in one of my matches. Like I didn't have mind control. I used Borlo, but I played a mirror, and my opponent had a Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, and I needed to add back a card. I just used made Borlo, took his, and then I had my own card back. And then you know, like that's a huge play. So imagine having not having to make the Borlo. Like let's just skip all the steps. And you're going second against a board that, you know, is a Solomon Great board, and you just mind control them, like... Yeah, it's, uh... I remember when mind control first came off the list in zoo format, and it was, like, the same concept, right? You, If you draw it, you force their you force their hand. Like, they have to either negate it, or you just get to play for free, because you just start overlaying your cards on top of theirs. It's kind of the same thing, because, I mean, you have access to Sanctuary, basically, whenever you want, and you can get those additional effects and it, it's just, I mean, good job on him. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, it was I, broken. Like I did, if he gets to go first, I did think he was going to get bodied because his opening hand was just like nothing. Game one. Um, he banished his gazelle off desires. He banished his, uh, sanctuary. I think he banished his sanctuary off desires. It was, it was just rough, but he got there somehow. 
Hey, when you get there, man, you get there. That's a brave dude. I didn't see that in his list. I didn't realize he's playing Desires of Warren Gazelle. I couldn't take the risk. Yeah, but I mean, he opened a double mind control into a a board, so it was fine. Easy. All right, uh, but me and uh, Joe did play the World Championship Series at our locals, and like he said, he took Salomon Great. I took Sky Striker, and I th- I thought the event was super fun. Like honestly, um, there was so much more turnout because uh, for those of you that don't know, you get the you get this sweet envelope as the prize uh, if you win. It's got the world's promos in it. So it's actually like worth something. You're not just playing for six packs and you don't get anything out of. So exactly. there, was, there was what like I, there had to be thirty plus people there. There was at least thirty, yeah. So we had a six round event total. It's five. It's five. Was that including the finals? Yeah, because we played four rounds of Swiss and then and then B and BLT played yeah. the final round. So five five round event and. I, I just had a blast. I was satisfied with the list. Let me pull those up real quick. How do you think it went? Um, me personally, I liked it a lot. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of like the World Celebration events, but I mean, like, I think this time going around, especially since like your deck choices were not as limited as I thought they were last year, because to me, there was only two playable decks last year. But I mean, I thought it was really good. You saw a lot of diversity at our locals. Like there were Cyber Dragon players. There was Sky Striker players. There's a ton of Salomon great players. Uh, there's th- the Thunder player that I was almost positive he would finally hang the deck up, but no, he didn't do it. Um, it was just like I said, it's just it, it's a change in pace too. Like you're not just playing like a regular standard stuff, and like I said, you're actually gonna play for something that's like really cool prize support for an event like that. So yeah, so okay. um, what our my final standing was uh, X one and Joe. Well, I'm. So only the finalists played the last round. So I was X1, and you were X1, but he played an extra round to me because he, he... No, I was XO. Oh, you, you beat what's-his-face? Hmm? Uh, you beat what's-his-name? Josh. Yeah. No, so technically, okay, so through four rounds I was undefeated, and then me and him played the final yeah. round. That's my loss. So he, he took second, I took third or uh, like i was x1 whatever they whatever they placed me at uh he played salad i guess list pulled up right here um which i didn't actually look at any of the actual world's list so i don't know how it compares but the only one i've looked to looked at is the first place one and his build's like drastically different from mine yeah you said he was playing three roar yeah he was playing three salmon great roar which i thought that was really unnecessary but i mean hey look I don't understand the man's thinking and stuff like that, but I do know he won the event, so he had to be doing something right. Yeah, I know um, I th- they interviewed him, and they said, because uh, they asked him, his deck has a lot more Salomon great cards, um, and it was so that Foxy excavates more consistently was the logic behind it. Like, you Which I can, un- I can understand that, because for me, the entire event, Foxy was the best card in my deck outside of, you know, like, raw drawing Gazelle or something like that. Because, like, Foxy did everything. Like, yeah. you summon it, it's starter, it outs every single floodgate, because I swear I ran into every possible floodgate possible that entire event. I ran into summon limits, there can only be one. Yeah, both against me. Yeah, there's a... Um, I didn't see any Mystic Mine. Uh, also, guys, protocol. Uh, being able to get rid of multi-roll, like... Foxy did like everything. Yeah. So that was easy. Yeah, Foxy was money. MVP that format. I was just watching, uh, obviously playing against you. It just, it did so much. So yeah, I, c- I could get wanting to use that first because you're not going to use the summon effect very much going first. You can if you discard it off like mining and stuff, mm-hmm. but for the most part, that's not going to come up. So if you just straight normal summon it and try to get that extra plus. But yeah, that I mean, it's just having that extra card is just like really really good. Let's see, like, in my list, like, I kind of stuck with, like, the mindset, like, how I've been talking to Aldo and the Blessing about Solomon Great, because they played a lot of it while it was still had, like, all of its cards and stuff like that. Um, I didn't focus on, like, saying, like, Solomon Great Roar and stuff like that, being sent to the graveyard and stuff like that. A lot of the times, I just wanted to be able to combo, and then the following turn, I just wanted to be able to kill my opponent. Yeah. So, so that's... Uh, I'm ahead. just going to run through your list real quick for anybody listening. Uh, one Gazelle, three Foxy, three Spinny, one Jaguar, one Falco, 
one uh, full, three Phantasmi, two Ash, two Ogre, one Debug, one Will, one Sanctuary, triple circle, three Cyanide Mining, three Called by the Grave, three Twin, one Rage, one Roar, three Impermanence, two Strike, uh, one Judgment. So that was the main deck. How do you feel like the main deck was overall? So, my main, honestly, I really liked my main deck. I got the, the the best part about it was I got to play every single game. Like every single hand was playable, and that's what I like, especially for events like this, because people are unfamiliar with the actual deck strategy and stuff like that. So being at least able to play every single game is huge. Uh, I mean, I wanted the main deck cards like Called by the Grave and Twin Twister because I thought hand traps are going to be popular. And I thought decks that played back row or floodgate esque type cards was going to be popular, so I wanted to make sure I had plenty of outs and plenty of ways to play through that. Uh, hand traps, ogre to me was like because we were talking about this towards yeah. the end of that. Like it was either super high impact or it did nothing. So yeah. I don't know if I would play ogre again, but I mean the times it was really good, like it was insane. But then there's like I don't know why this card's sitting in my hand. Yeah, it's like, especially in the salad mirror. Like that that's when I felt like Ogre just didn't do almost anything unless they were forced to like hard go into Mirage Stalio first, which I don't know why they would have to do that because unless you're playing some weird weird build. There's like, not really like there's never a situation where that would come up. There's not really a good time in the salad mirror to Ogre. Like, okay, so the best case scenario is um since because you notice my deck, right? I'm not playing a bunch of like outside extended for Gazelle card, like for Salomon Great cards. I'm just playing like straight combo cards and stuff like that and just relying on the engine, right? So I figured a lot of people would have the same mindset as my I would and wouldn't be playing like extra cards in the deck like Crusade or Reclusia or backup sent uh backup sentry or cards like that to be able to keep playing through like minor hand traps. But uh during the Salomon Great combo, the only thing you can really ogre, and to me, to me honestly, you can either hit Stalio or you can hit Gazelle. Uh, so those are both like really lackluster plays. But when it's your only hand trap, like I, the two Salad Mirrors I played, like I would ogre the Gazelle when they summon it and activate the effect to send, and then they would just lose outright because they didn't have another way to play after that. So I mean, it there it had it, it had its moments, but. It just it's not powerful in the mirror. It's really good against Striker when they try to go for multi role play. Yeah, I mean that 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 was the reason I played it. That was basically the only reason I played it was that in a pendulum. Like I was actually a little bit afraid of uh, somebody at our locals playing pendulum. But so your side deck's pretty standard. You did choose to play the uh, the only thing that's a little different is is playing uh, Avermax. He's playing the fusion for Super Poly in the side, and he's playing the update uh, jammer transcode talker combo, which I know you resolved like every time the first three rounds, I think. I have resolved that combo infinite time. Oh, does that list still have Avermax in it? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm. That's not supposed to be there. I played Borload instead of Avermax. Okay, so it was a uh, Borload ignore. Yeah, I can fix that later, but uh. Yeah, the train. I just I played the uh, transcode combo just because I wanted a way to kill my opponent through a clear field, and I didn't think it was going to come up as much as it did. But there's a lot of times like people just, like you just clear their board and you transcode them and they can't do anything. So that combo for me personally was really good. Uh, I wanted Borrow Load for the mirror. Like that's the only reason I wanted to play that card because like I know a lot of people are playing. Uh, we're considering playing Avermax. And Avermax, if you can look at my list, it's a really, really hard card to out. Yeah. So, I mean, the only, like, makeable out you have at that point is Boral Load. Plus, it also outs opposing Boral Loads. Yeah, that's why, so I, I, that's why I played Ningursu specifically for that card. Uh, so, your side deck, besides uh, Super Poly, Standard, DD Crow, I thought was super strong in this format. Um, they got Anti-Spell for Pendulum, Striker. Do you play that in the mirror? Uh, it just depended on how I felt. Like when I played the two mirrors, I didn't side it in. Um, yeah. I had considered order just because it was like an auto win yeah. against a lot of decks, but I just I didn't do it. But um, uh, then you had Sanctum in there, which uh, I feel like was pretty good. Yeah, Sanctum came in for. Uh, I'm honestly I played it just really for the mirror. 
And then I thought it was okay against Striker. Because, like, uh, obviously you can play around Scythe with uh, Ray. But being able to lock you into one specific Link monster instead of you being able to do your cycle through him, I thought was really important. So I thought that was an okay choice. And then uh, evenly, I didn't even know you were playing that. Like, how'd that do? Uh, so the... I, I cited it in every time I went second, but I never saw it, so I never got to resolve it. Yeah, okay. But I know a lot of a. Uh, I know, like, it's a blowout against Striker, because, like, it's not like TCG format where we now have three judgments, so, like, they could decide in judgment, and that card's never going to resolve. But, uh. In theory, it's just really good. Like, your opponent does all this stuff, and then, like, even in Salamigrate, man, great. So, like, a popular thing that I've noticed when I play mirrors is when you know you're playing a Salamigrate mirror. They don't search Roar, but they search Rage, because interrupting two monsters on your side of the field before you are able to put Bailings in the graveyard, it's huge. So, yeah, like, yeah. with that knowledge, like, you just evenly match them, and then, like, you just get to play your game free. And then oh. uh, the one of Order, which is a blowout. We, we both know that. Yeah, it just goes in with Anti-Spell. So. All right, so... I you have four drawables left. I sent you my list, right, uh, yesterday? Or I posted it in the chat. Yeah, I'll get a hold of her. Um, but I, I played Sky Striker. It was a going first build because I do have three multi roll. I'm not reliant on just hoping to draw it. Uh, two Ash, two Valor, two Ogre, three Ray, uh, three Cosmic Cyclone, two Foolish, one Metal Foes Fusion, two Pot of Desires, one Rota, three Field Spell, one Afterburner, one Jamming Waves, one Booster, one Drones, two Shark Cannon. Two anchor, three multi roll, one equip spell, two engage, one terraforming, one upstart, three impermanence, and three there can only be one. So I still think you're an absolute madman for playing desires. I mean, I, it performed extremely well. Um, like I would never do it. It would never be the first action I did. Um, because I, I was fortunate enough to either always have access to Ray or a, a way to play. Um, the deck, I, I never dead drew with the deck like you do in the TCG because just having that extra multi-roll to pop area zero, like you, you need that. But the deck was super, super fun. Um, Cosmic Cyclone was amazing for forcing, forcing back row. Like, I'm not going to talk too much about the striker, but... I just thought the format was super fun. Um, there can only be one was good in every single matchup. Yeah, that card's insane. Uh, I honestly believe like I could not have won if I didn't have Foxy to out that card. Yeah, uh, um, uh, our game one. I mean, that straight that slowed you down basically to a point where you just couldn't play. Yeah, like it, I couldn't, it, I couldn't it ended your Foxy. turn, and then I was just able to resolve so many cards that you were just playing from behind. Yeah, instead of sitting there, like, playing for an extra 10 minutes, I'm just like, we're just going to the next game. Yeah. There's no way. Um, so I did choose to play Hita, uh, which I know a lot of people were cutting, but I thought it performed well when it was applicable. Uh, Ningirsu never came up. Bomber, I liked the idea of it. It just never came up. Um, and then for my side, I did three summon limit, three crow. Uh, gamma and Twin never saw Gamma, so uh, pretty standard list overall. Um, the event was awesome. Both me and Joe walked away with the promos, so that was pretty freaking cool. Shoutouts to Aaron who got another another envelope. Kept it all in the Discord, and it was broken. Yeah, so out of, out of four of us, out of probably like 30, 40 people, three of us got the promos. It was oh, that was great. Probably never happen again, but it felt great. It's kind of like when the five Kage were up against Madara or Gia. That's how I felt. <laughs> now, obviously, we know how that ended, but we won't get into that. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so going into this next format, do you think you'll mess around with Salem and Gray, or do you think you'll still stick to com Wombo Combo? I think... Uh, it'll be like one of those things. Like I think Thunder's still going to be the deck. Like, as a pocket deck, you, know, yeah. you just need to be able to play something else. I think I'm going to actually stick with Salomon Great. I think the card, I think the deck's really good. I still think it has, I still think it's consistent enough to play. Uh, Spitty Foxy's now like the heart and soul at this point, because, like I said, you only have one. 
Gazelle, so you can't rely on that all the time. Yeah, with the rarity upgrades to Foxy, maybe I'll actually play the deck. We'll see. I kind of hope they reprint them all in like that prismatic secret rarity. Yeah. That'd be really I, I think. I mean, Gazelle. Gazelle deserves it. I don't think he's confirmed yet, but Gazelle deserves it. Foxy definitely deserves it. We'll see. But, um, I don't know if I'll commit to Striker. Uh, like one multi roll is just so bad. Like oh, two, two, two engage and two anchor didn't matter. Didn't matter at all. But one multi roll, like you just feel it every single game. That's scary to think about. I don't know if I could put that. I can. I don't know if I could put that much faith behind it. Yeah, like being reliant. Like, see, Salomon Great's not reliant. Like you can play without Gazelle. It's not fun. But you can play without Gazelle. Like Striker cannot play without multi roll. Yes, you, you don't have that grind game. And with one multi roll, it means you can't play Desires because I mean Striker bricks. Like you, it, it bricks all the time. Uh, I was just lucky and didn't. So you want to play Desires, but now you absolutely cannot because unless you open two engage and can get Ray and multi roll out of your deck, you're just screwed. Oh, looks like you're going to have to move over to Extravagance. Oh, I thought about that. I thought about playing it for the memes at uh, Locals. Um, I almost played Demise, the Demise variant, but... We're not going to talk about that. But I didn't. <laughs> Demise Striker, I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, you just have to cut so many spells to do that, and it's just like, it's only good going first. It's just not worth playing. I believe it. Um, man. Okay, that's enough about the world's format. It was awesome. If you guys didn't make it to your OTS stores to play the event, I recommend going next year. It was my first time playing in anything like this. Normally, I just stick to locals and miss everything fun because I got other stuff to do. But it, it was a lot of fun. You got to talk to a lot of people out there. And you get a cool field center, too. Yeah, the field center is actually... I didn't... Because last year we got them and we they were all that dragon. I didn't really like it, but this one I like a lot better. Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Right, it's a little Link 5 Dark Magician wannabe. Look inside card, yep. Yeah. It's cool. All right, well, how much time are we at? All right, so we got like two minutes left. Overall, 2019, I thought it was a pretty good format. Uh, 2018, 2019. There's a couple complaints because when did we lost Goki at the start of the year, right? Or like a little bit into the year? Uh, we had to deal with Dark Goki for what seemed like oh, forever. Yeah. We did. But, I mean, Striker's about to die in about two months. Sal Great's going to get the axing yeah, of a lifetime. Oh, Sal is dead in October. Unplayable. Over. Because they, they have like, to, they have to kill it to sell Marine Cess and because it's just too good. Like, remember how Archfiend went to one after it won Worlds? Over, yeah. <laughs> just over. <laughs> yeah. So if if you are a Salamander great player, get your time in now because it's just not gonna happen after October. Nope. Zero chance, boys. Leave. What are the promos going for? Like four hundred bucks? Three? No, it's like three, two fifty, three hundred. They're up there. Yeah, and that's another reason. So, like we were saying earlier, is you get to play, like you get to play for something worth money, and that was the best part about that is not the actual payout, but it's actually getting to play real matches at locals. Yeah, like it actually, like it just it's. To me, like when you're actually playing for something like an actual prize and not just playing, like the atmosphere changes. Like you actually get to see like actual competitive play, which is something our locals desperately lacks and stuff like that. So I liked the how we actually got an actual competitive aspect for once. Yeah, I mean, I, round one, I still got paired up with Phantasm Spiral. Like it was still there, but surprisingly, that's more difficult than it sounds because I was playing. Valor, Impermanence, and Anchor, which were all dead. And Off yeah. the wall. <laughs> um, but he didn't understand the concept of you can't respond to my spell activations. 
And he was getting every, very frustrated. Every local has to have him, bro. Every local has to have him. But after that, like, I, I just felt like, like it almost, it didn't feel like a regional, but the way I was playing, like, I was actually focused on the game. Like, I wasn't, like, paying attention to anything else. Nobody's trying to trade while you're playing. Like, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. End of story. Oh, shout out oh, to, sure. shout out to Doug who bought in uh, after round two and fucked my pairings, uh, my pairings up. So uh, I, I almost got. I almost got screwed on that end, but he fixed it. Good, good old sauceless French. All right, so we're we're actually at time, Joe. You got any final thoughts? Uh, like John said, if you haven't ever played in a world format and you're able to do it next year, one hundred percent do it. Uh, rest in peace, Solomon Great. You're not going to make it. Striker was already dead to begin yeah, with, and just uh, died last list. Uh. We don't know where Aaron went, but shout-outs to him, and uh, Douglas French has no sauce. All right, guys, so that was episode 23 of X2 Drop. Check us out every Monday. We go live at uh, 8 a.m., uh, 10 a.m. on my YouTube, and whenever I get to it on Joe's, apparently. Um, yeah, that that sounds about right. And, yeah, so YouTube.com slash BingoHD and YouTube.com slash The Dual Factory. But uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Okay, bye!